This video leads on from our last one, and it's some techniques for finding limits, especially if you don't have a graph drawn. And you might have to have an algebraic approach or um, perhaps just a conceptual approach to these things. So let's get an example. Say we want to find the limit of this expression as x approaches 3. So this function will be um, undefined when x is 3 because the bottom of our function here um, that will be equal to zero. But we want to know what happens as we approach x equals three. So our first thing is to do some um, factorizing of the top here. So if we factorize that, we get x minus three, x plus two, all over x minus three. So then that becomes, if we cancel out those factors of x minus three here, we're just left with x plus two. So then if we substitute in, so if x is equal to 3, x plus 2 would be equal to 5. So therefore, the limit of what that can become is 5. Now, our next example, we can't simplify it, but what we can do is consider what happens when x gets very big. So we've got this limit here where x is tending towards infinity. So just meaning if we go all the way to the right of our graph, what would happen? So with this one, we imagine that x is very big. And what would that do to that expression? So that would become 2 times something very big. Let's just imagine it's maybe like 2 times 1,000. And then that would be over the, something that is 2 to the power of 1,000. And then if you expand that a bit more, you can think about what, that's, what that would come out to. What number would it be getting close to? Um, if we added another 0 on both of those, if x was 10,000 instead, what would happen? Now, what we have going on here is that the top is, it is getting bigger, but it's at a much slower rate. So this one is getting much, much bigger than the top one. So if you had something small relatively being divided by something very, very big, and we know that if you're doing to powers, that gets big very, very quickly, then what you're going to end up having is that that small top number compared to the bottom number, it's going to get divided by something huge. So that is going to tend towards zero. So our final answer for the limit of this expression is that that will become zero. Now that won't always be zero. You might have a tendency to think that that might, might always happen, but you can have some constants that come out in that as well and you get it tending towards a um, constant number instead. So here's our third example. Now if we tried to simplify that, it's not going to help us. It's going to be x, x plus 5 on the top row. But what we can do instead is to um, substitute in some values around this limit value of 4. So we try out something just before the 4 and just after the 4 and see what happens. Now you can use your graphics calculator and the table function to help you do this a little faster. So I've put in some values that are approaching the 4 and then some values just after the 4. And here you can see that as we go up, we're going towards a very large number. So we're actually tending towards infinity at that point. Now remember, limits must be finite to be defined as a limit. So for this one, we have that this function has no limit as the function is not tending towards a finite number as x tends towards 4.